You are welcome to Chemistry Made Easy with Bright Edu. In this video lesson, I will be solving 10 revision questions that cut across various topics in chemistry. So here is the first question. So let's quickly start. So the first question here says, the formula of the compound formed in a reaction between a trivalent metal M and a tetravalent non-metal X is, it is very, very easy. So you can see that it's a reaction that is formed between two types of elements. The first of them is a metal and the other is a non-metal. But to be specific, it is a trivalent metal, okay, trivalent metal M, and the other is a tetravalent non-metal X. And in the question, they said that the metal is trivalent. What does it mean? It means that this particular metal has a plus three charge. Yes, metals are positively charged, whereby non-metals are negatively charged. So this must be noted. So they said in the question that the metal was a trivalent metal, so it has a plus three charge, you know, tri means three, and the non-metal is a tetravalent non-metal. So it is X, but has a minus four charge. Tetravalent is minus four. So how do we form the compound? Very, very easy. We need to exchange the charges. So plus three and X minus four. So what will happen here is this. The X, oh sorry, the four in the X will be exchanged to this M, whereby the three in the M will go over to X. So look at what will happen. Without the charges coming, just the numbers. So four will come here and three will go here. So when this happens, what becomes the chemical formula of this compound? It becomes M4 is already here. So M4, three go over there. So X3. So this is the chemical formula of the compound. So what becomes the answers in this option? So it becomes option C. Because option C here is M4, M4, X3, X3. So this is the answer. So the question. So let's quickly move over to question two. And question two explains a diagram. Now, the, 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 the question says, the diagram above shows the reaction part of an exothermic reaction. Yes, because we have two types of thermal reactions. The first of them is an endothermic reaction and the other is an exothermic reaction. Now in this context, in this diagram, it shows the reaction part of an exothermic reaction. Why? Because the H arrow and the HP, the H arrow in this reaction is greater than the HP. First of all, what do we call H arrow? H arrow or H here means heat content. So H arrow means heat content of reactant greater than heat content of products. You know, this particular question is from the topic called spontaneity of a chemical reaction that explains spontaneous reaction. You know, we have three factors that determines if a reaction will be spontaneous or not. And the first of them is enthalpy, the other is entropy, and the last is Gibbs energy or free energy. Now, the point here about this question is, they said that the enthalpy change of the reaction is represented as dash. So first of all, it must be noted that enthalpy which is same as heat content of a reaction is given with H. So what becomes the symbol for enthalpy change? Enthalpy change is given with a symbol, you know, change in science means delta and enthalpy now is H. So what becomes the symbol of enthalpy change? It becomes delta H. And this enthalpy change has a mathematical expression. It is simply HP minus H arrow. Okay, now in this context, in this reaction, the heat of reactant was greater than the heat of product. So, what is the, the parameter that differentiates the heat of reactant and heat of product? It is simply delta H. So, the, 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 the enthalpy change is the enthalpy change of the reaction is represented as Roman figure 2. So here becomes delta H because delta H is what differentiates the heat of reactant from the heat of product. Recall, if the heat of reactant is greater than the heat of product for a reaction, it means that an exothermic reaction occurs. But if the heat of product is greater than the heat of reactant, it means an endothermic reaction occurs. So this is how the question is solved. 
Now, you can see the effects part of this reaction. They call it activated complex. Now, it must be noted that the difference between the activated complex and the heat of reactant, activated complex and the heat of reactant, I did not say activated complex and the heat of product. The difference between the activated complex and the heat of reactant is what we call EA. And what is EA? It means activation energy. So, in this question, the entropy change of the reaction is represented as Roman figure 2. So, that is how questions of this aspect are being tackled. So, let's quickly move over to the next question. Now, let's quickly move over to question 3 and question 4. Question 3 says, the flame used by welders in cutting metals is simply called oxy acetylene flame this is the flame used in by welders in cutting metals so that is for that so moving over to question four question four says if the electronic configuration of an element is this which is 1s2 2s2 and 2p5 how many unpaired electrons are there now to determine numbers of unpaired electron in an atom we simply take note of the last orbital and what is lack of orbital here? It is simply 2p5 orbital. Now, it must be noted that we have various orbitals, and they are the x orbital, the p orbital, the z orbital, and the f orbital. It must be noted that the s orbital uh, occupies a maximum number of electrons to be 2 electrons for the p orbital 6. For the d orbital, it is um, 10, and for the f orbital, it's 14. Now, you can see there's a difference here. The difference here is always 4. Okay, between the S and the P orbital, the P and the D orbital, and the D and the F orbital. Now, now it must be noted that whenever we are to draw for our S orbital, we simply draw one box. That means the maximum number of electrons that will be here is two electrons. You can see it here. Because in one box, we have two electrons to be the maximum number of electrons that should occupy the orbital. Now, for the P orbital, since we have six electrons, how many boxes do you think we we'll draw? We we'll draw just three boxes because two, 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 that is six. For the D orbital, how many do you think are we, are we to draw? We have to draw five boxes though. Okay. okay, so let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So for the F orbital, since we have 14 electrons, how many boxes do you think we have to draw? We have to draw 14, sorry, we have to draw seven boxes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. Now, each of the boxes, 2 will be the maximum number of electrons that will fill the boxes. So, in this case, what orbital did we end in for the uh, electronic configuration for this element? It is simply the P orbital. So, we simply draw how many boxes? Uh, uh, 3 boxes. And now, what's the maximum number of electrons here? What's the number of electrons here? It's simply 5. And the maximum number of electrons that should occupy the P orbital is 6. So, let's fill first. According to a rule called Horn's rule, we have to fill singly first before pairing takes place in the degenerate orbital. So, we will fill singly. So, we have five, we are working towards five. So, we'll fill again, many, just one, but we have four. One, two, three, four, and the last one, one. So, it's actually complete. So, how many unpaired electrons are we seeing here? We are simply, we are simply just seeing one unpaired electron. So you, so, you can see how questions of this aspect are being tackled. So, let's quickly move over to the next question, which is question five. So, let's quickly move over to the next question, which is, a time. A time is simply an alkyne. Okay? A time is simply an alkyne. So we are coming somewhere. So a time is passed through a hot tube containing organonickel catalyst to produce isoprene, uh, polythene, ethanol, and benzene. Now let's do the reaction. A time has a chemical formula to be C2H2. Okay? And they said that it is passed through a hot, hot tube containing organonickel catalyst. So the catalyst used here is organonickel catalyst. Okay, nickel catalyst. So from this reaction, what do you think we will get? Now it must be noted when a tiny is passed through a red, red hot tube containing organonickel catalyst, the compound that is produced is simply benzene. Yes, we are to get benzene. Okay, so the answer goes to option D, but let's work with the reaction. So, see, this is C2H2 reacting it to or passing through organonickel catalyst. Okay, nickel catalyst. So, what do we get? We get benzene. And what's the chemical formula of benzene? It's simply C6H6. 
now so the reaction is not balanced so if i put three here i think the reaction will be balanced because uh, we have two atoms of carbon here so three times this two that is six and three times this two of hydrogen that is six so the reaction is balanced this is the chemical formula of benzene which is c6 h6 so this becomes the answer to the question now uh we can't get uh isoprene because isoprene is the monomer unit of natural rubber which is also called 2 methyl boot 1 3 diene now for polythene polythene is a polymer unit and the monomer unit of this is called ethene and lastly ethanol no ethanol can be gotten from this reaction okay ethanol can be gotten from the hydration of ethene that is adding water to ethene and ethene is an alkene okay so there are more to this though so let's quickly move over to the question six so let's quickly move over to question six and it says the iopac nomenclature of the compound above is now it is very very easy without even looking at the options you can actually get the answer without stress first of all we have to identify the longest continuous carbon chain this is the longest continuous carbon chain after identifying it we have to uh, number the longest continuous carbon chain now in the look of things how many carbon can i see i can see four carbon so it means that the end of the name will be boots but let us check the configuration of this compound is this compound purely an alkene because if this compound is purely an alkene the name of the compound will be called butane but in the look of things it is not an alkene but rather it is an alcohol you guys can see the oh functional group it is an alcohol but to be specific which type of alcohol alcohol alcanol okay so it means that the end of the name will end with buta Null. E changes to OL. So the end of the name ends with buta null. Now, that is what we are having at the end of naming this compound. But before that, let us number the longest continuous carbon chain. Which direction are we to number from? We have to number so our substrate have a low number as possible. And we have to number towards our functional group, which is the OA. So we start with 1, 2, 3, and 4. So when numbering, so basically it's one butanol or butanol because one. Is still like saying butanol. So at carbon two, I had two chloro, and at carbon three, I had three bromo. So what do you think becomes the name of this compound? Alphabetically, B comes from before C. So we have to name B first. So it becomes three bromo. Okay, after saying three bromon, I simply say two chloro. Okay, what is the last name? Butanol. So the name of this compound becomes. 3 bromo, okay, 3 bromo, 2 chloro, butanol. Okay, we have to name alphabetically B comes before C. So, what becomes the name of this compound in this option? Option B 3 bromo, 2 chloro, butanol. Now, let's quickly move over to the next question, which is question 7. And it says, Lucas reagent is used to test for the answer is simply alkanols okay lucas reagent is used to test for alkanols now moving over to question eight now this is the electron sub level of a particular element which is unknown now now the question is the diagram above represent the electron sub level for which element very very easy first of all we have to count the electrons that are found in this particular element sub level okay electron sub level so one two three four five six seven eight now you can see we have how many electrons here eight electrons now moving over to this element carbon nitrogen oxygen and fluorine now in the look of things it can be carbon because carbon is written as c12 and 6 carbon 12 with atomic number 6 so and how do we get our pen for this atom that is our proton electron and neutron because we're trying to work that this element that we have we we basically have eight electrons because of the counting so here the proton number is six okay the value down is always the proton number the electron number since the proton number and since the atom is neutral the proton number equals the electron number so what becomes the electron number is same as six and what becomes our neutron number is calculated by saying a minus z okay neutron number is calculated by saying a minus z that's 12 minus six so what becomes neutron number it is simply six okay now moving over to nitrogen nitrogen is n 14 and 7 so what becomes what becomes the pen for this atom all the atoms here they are all neutral so since proton will be 7 electron will be 7 and neutron will become 14 minus 7 so what becomes neutron number 14 minus 7 that's 7 so moving over to oxygen so i think the answer will be oxygen oxygen is 16 and 8 
So what becomes the BN for oxygen atom? What is the proton eight? And I said that for a neutral atom, proton number equals electron number. So what becomes the electron number eight? And what becomes this? That's 16 minus eight, that is eight. So the point here is this. Since oxygen have the electron number to be eight, so this diagram above will be for oxygen. Okay, you know it can't be for fluorine. Fluorine is quite different. So this is how questions on this aspect are being tackled. So let's quickly move forward to the next question, which is question nine and question 10. Now let's quickly move over to the last two questions, which is question nine and 10. Now question nine says, an example of element that can catenate is simply carbon. Carbon as an element is the most extensive catenator in chemistry. Carbon has the ability to form a lot of chains, long and long chains. So carbon is, should be the answer, is the most extensive catenator in chemistry. Now let's quickly move over to the next question, which is question 10. And it says, the compound above is an... Now, first of all, before we even try to identify what compound is it, I have to write it again. So this is CH3 bonded to CH2 bonded to C, double bond O bonded to O, CH3, uh, sorry, CH2 and CH3. First of all, we have to try to identify this compound. Now, eta, this is eta. Eta have their general formula to be RO bond O bond RO. So the compound should look like this. So if this compound here looks like this, it should be the answer. But in the look of things, I don't think it's like that because RO signifies an alkyl group. Okay, an alkyl group can be any group at all. It can be CH3 group called methyl. It can be CH2, CH3, which is, when you bring them together, we have C2H5, okay, which is called ethyl, okay, like this. CH3, CH2, bring them together, that's C2H5. Okay, this is what I mean. C2H5, and same applies. C2H5. So all of these are alkyl group, they are ethers. So in the look of the, let me just write here as RO, and arrow bonding to this C I'm seeing up and C going to O and this C going to O here and still bonding to this alkyl group called arrow. So is it the conversion of eta? No, eta should not be the answer. Let us try for alkanals. Alkanals have their, their, uh, their general formula to be arrow CHO, which we call CHO. Okay, and in the look of things, this can be the answer because at the end I haven't add arrow here and there's no arrow, so this will add up here. So for the last, for the other, which is of alkanols. Alkanol is R bond O H. No, this can be the answer. So what should be the answer? It's simply esters. Yes, esters have the general formula to be R O C O O R O. Yes, this is R O the ethyl group C. Okay, two O and R O. So this should be the answer. Esters should be the answer. So you can see how questions like this have been tackled. So if you find this video helpful, do well to click the subscribe button and also share these videos with your friends. Thanks for watching.